Hello and welcome to another Bedroom Guru. Thank you for your messages and your emails. It's absolutely brilliant. I um, I think I set a little time bomb off, not time bomb, but a little um, explosive bomb off when I um, did the list of, um, you know, whether you're psychic or spiritually awakened. Because everyone's saying, that's me, that's me, that's me. So obviously I said that I would carry on today and help you get onto a spiritual path and that's what I'm doing. Um, one thing I will say is that um, it changes you. I think the best way to say it is, is that um, when I was, <clears throat> voice is a bit croaky today, so you'll have to bear with it. When I was, um, well, I've been psychic all my life, basically. I come from, as you know, generations of mediums before me. So it was as natural as living and breathing. But I felt that I never fitted in, um, in school, um, in any environments like that. I used to try and be funny. I used to be try and be extrovert very bubbly so that people would like me because I had like a really big um, downer on myself really you know I'd had quite a um, bad upbringing um, and so I kind of had a lot of lack of self-belief which didn't help with being psychic either I kept it quite quiet to be honest with you but I used to have visions and dreams and all sorts of things all through my life my first spirit person I saw obviously was my dad um, three days after he died in a road accident when I was nine um, and then it went on from there. Um, I kind of kept it, you know, in the back boiler, um, joined the police service. I ended up doing readings actually for people in the evening um, during, the, during my police years. And I used to use it on murder investigations and finding missing people and all sorts. Um, so yeah, it was quite a handy little tool to have, to be honest with you, especially when you're interviewing suspects, it was good. Um, but it kind of, you know, it wasn't the forefront of my world, to be honest with you. And um, when I got retired from the police service, um, I tried to get jobs, CVs went missing. Um, I even I even actually applied once for McDonald's, right, just because I thought, what the hell's going on? And they said I was overqualified. I just couldn't get a job. I did a couple of things which weren't, you know, great. And what started happening was is um, when you are being chosen on this earth plane to actually be an ambassador, to be a forefront of, you know, spiritualism, um, you kind of get pushed into it. You know, lots of people that are, are psychically aware or are spiritually awake, you know, they can have the whole life just being aware and not doing anything about it. But if you're being chosen, you ain't got a choice. So it started with my house having spirit people in everywhere. I'd walk past the light bulb and it explode. I would have like chandeliers swinging above my head. My partner at the time used to say, what the hell is that about? But it wouldn't just swing, it would stop and then swing and then stop and then swing. And then we had people coming into the bedroom at night, you know, like speaking my name. And he said, for Christ's sake, what's going on? There's someone in the room, he could even see him. And then I had a crying baby that would cry in one room. And I'm not like a mumsy person. I adore babies, but crying, you know, that's kind of what does your head in. So go into a room and then move to another room, then move to another room. And as a sceptic, you know, I'd see if there was any new babies in the street or anything like that, and there wasn't. And it was just relentless. You know, they were everywhere, calling my name, throwing things. It was just absolutely mental. And like my partner at the time was like, for God's sake, what's going on? You need to sort this out. I said, I don't know what's going on. I just don't know. He goes, we're not getting any sleep. It's ridiculous. And so it was just totally mad, totally mad. Um, and then what happened was, is my friend phoned up and said, oh, I'm, I'm going to see a medium, but I'm scared. Can you come with me? And so I said, right, okay then. And this like began off for months, this baby crying and all these bloody things, light bulbs smashing and God knows what. So anyway, I went to the doorstep, and when the medium opened the door, she didn't look at my friend, she looked at me and said, that baby won't stop crying until you get on the spiritual path. I was like, oh my God. And we got in there, and she did the reading for my friend, but she just wanted to talk to me. She goes, you need to get on it, because you ain't got a choice. You are actually going to be doing this full time. I said, I'm not. She goes, yes, you are. Anyway, the fact that she said about the crying baby was like, oh my God. So, very long story short, um, I, I ended up getting my my um, finding out about being retired on the 31st of May 20, no it was um, 2003 and I was really upset because they hadn't officially told me, I just found it in like a newsletter thing they used to send around to police officers, that really upset me and um, there was a newspaper that came with a letter and I remember standing on the patio outside, it was a really warm day and um, the 
the um, paper kept flickering and when I looked it had an evening and medium ship locally and so I thought well, I might as well give it a go. It's like a busman's holiday, you know. I never ever went to these evenings because we all had it in us, in our family. So, you know, you didn't really want to go and sit there and watch what you already could do. But anyway, I thought I'd go along and it was in Maylee. And I went there and I remember sitting there and I saw these three blokes, right, because it's Castle Hall in Maylee and it's all glass one side, right. And I thought, they're a bit rude, they better sit down because I thought they were standing this side because I could see him I thought it was a reflection and so I'm standing there and then one of them waves at me this young bloke I think his name was Mark and I went and I looked and I couldn't see any like people standing there so I realized it wasn't a reflection he said I died on on a motorbike and he was in like leathers and then there was another bloke there I can't remember his name I've written it in my journals from years ago and he said oh I'm a, I was a taxi driver I had a heart attack and then this other bloke's chatting away and I'm like, oh my God. And I just, and I didn't even realise the show had started, right? And I'm like, Jesus. And so I literally was totally engrossed in what they were saying to me. The spirit people. And then the bloke, it was Mike, Mike Hunter and Denise somebody, Simbler, somebody, I can't remember the name. I said, excuse me. And I went, oh, like that. And he was, he'd come to me, right? And he, and he gave me a message from my dad, and it was so spot on, it was ridiculous. There was things that my dad always used to say as a code that it was him. And so I knew it was my dad, and he said, you've got to dust yourself down because you're about to take the biggest ride of your life. Um, more sounding weird. Um, and he said, you're going you're gonna to be known worldwide, you're going to be writing, teaching and demonstrating. And he said, and everybody's going to know you and you're going to be a huge ambassador. And I thought, what, as a copper? I thought, I don't think so. So I was going, oh, thank you. But I didn't really know what he meant. And um, so I was like, OK, then. And he said, seriously, he goes, it's going to be so quick. It's so quick. You're, it's just going to be the quickest roller coaster. And he goes, it's going to be amazing for you. I was like, oh, thank you. Then anyway, when I got up after the reading, which I didn't really know, it like came to an end. And I thought, right, they're either going to think I'm a nutter or a wannabe, but I'm going to go up to the stage because these three men were still there. I'm thinking, I'm going mental. So I went up onto the stage and I said to the, Denise, I said, there's three men over there. She went, oh, right, OK. And I thought, oh, she thinks I'm a nutter. And so I started describing them. She went, you've just described my stepson, my late husband and my father-in-law. And I went, are you joking? She said, no. And, I, and they were still there. So I started chatting to her. She goes, you need to get into a circle right away. And so I did. And I got into this circle at Mill Hall um, in Maylee and I found that I was advanced. I found that I was way advanced above other people. And unfortunately, it led to people being a bit jealous and thinking I was being like a bit cocky and I wasn't. I just was at a higher level than them as a beginner. And it was really hard work to begin with because every circle that I went to, um, you know, they just kind of like were a bit pissy with me. Um, but it wasn't long before I was invited to start my own circle and then it was perfect, it was brilliant but um, all I'd say to you is, is um, as we go through the steps of what you do just let it happen, let the universe drop in your opportunities and take them um, because you know there's no, there's no individual way on how to develop your psychic awareness or your spirituality um, it's, they, they kind of do it and you grab hold of it so how do we get onto that path? How do we do it? Um, the best thing to do really is to, to seek out your local spiritualist church. Um, it depends which ones you want to go to. The SNU are a lot more church based, a lot more hymn and prayer based with principles, whereas a spiritualist centre is a lot more relaxed. There's, not, there's no hymns, there's no prayers. It's more of a, a spiritualist centre. Uh, it sounds weird, but it's obvious. Um, and it's more... Um, about you know developing yourself workshops evenings of mediumship um, and that kind of thing and that's where you find like-minded people who will welcome you in so don't worry about going in on your own there's open circles and closed circles open circles anybody can go and you can turn up anytime you want um, and they basically are a circle of awareness where you perhaps will learn meditation and the circle leader might give you exercises to do that will help you to open your um, visionary um, abilities and your sensory abilities so that it takes you further in understanding your connection with the spirit world and the angel realms 
um, they're stepping stone circles. So if you feel like you don't fit or you don't like it, move on to the next one. All right? Don't worry about staying there out of loyalty. If it's not right, move on. It's as simple as that. Most circles um, are like a fiver just to cover admin. If you're looking at 30, 40 quid, you know, just don't even go there. The person is obviously money orientated and they just want money rather than help you develop. So look, be careful on who you select. Um, Sometimes the open circles can lead you to closed circles or you may be invited um, to closed circles. Closed circles take a lot more dedication. Um, they are the same time every week. You have to attend unless you're like half dying. Um, and they are a select amount of people. Not everybody can join them. And then you all develop together. It's a beautiful environment to be in because you start developing as one. Um, you know, you're like a circle of awareness. You start to develop as one and you start feeling connected to each other yeah, there's also all types of um, circles there's healing circles but when you go to a spiritualist church you'll start finding what you're you know attracted to what you gravitate towards some people are healers some people are just like workers psychics which is what i said before you know working on earthbound energy some will, will naturally be mediums you might be drawn to trance you might be drawn to crystals that is for you to decide so you know start looking at local workshops in your area as i always say my friend's um website spiritguides.co.uk um you know if you search for places for places in your area and workshops in the area it will show you it will give you a full rundown of what's available in the area go out and become a psychic sponge go and you know Unless it's extortionate money, don't do it. Because, again, as I said to you, it's money orientated. But find places that um, have got all different types of things going on. You know, angel workshops. Just have a go at all of them and see what your heart, what your soul says. Oh, my God, I want to learn more about that. It's such an exciting phase at this point because you're entering into something so huge. And when you start seeing the synchronicities and start realising that all of these, this itch you couldn't scratch, you're starting to be relieved. You feel like a different person. And what I will say at this point is, is that when you start feeling different, you'll start experiencing self-love, self-reflection. You'll start really looking at yourself and you'll find that you'll start getting some sort of strength that you knew that you didn't think you had. So when I was, before I actually started developing, I was in lots of unhealthy relationships with friends and spouses and partners. And I found that um, I was caretaking. I was trying to rescue all these people. Lots of psychic people take on difficult partners because we can see the potential of their soul. Um, we don't look at the personality or addictive traits they have. We think we can save them. You can't, but we try and do it. We become like these saviors of people that are troubled. And at the end of the day, unless if they unless they want to help themselves, you are walking down a dead end street. Um, so you may find that your boundaries change and you'll start loving yourself and respecting yourself a lot more as the spirit world and your spirit guides do. And you you might change in relationships. You might break up um, with people. Um, either friends or partners because you know they're not right for you you start growing as a person and you realize that people around you are not good for you so be aware that that can take place you'll you'll find a hidden strength that you never knew you had and <clears throat> by exercising your boundaries you start attracting um more healthier people people that are sorted people that want to help themselves um so be aware of that it's a wonderful transition because you know, when I look at the people surrounding me now, they're absolutely wonderful. I've got the best friends ever. I've got the most wonderful people. And, you know, it ref it's a reflection on you, really. Who you have around you is who you are. So have a look at who's around you, because it's a big teller, I tell you. Um, <clears throat> again, once you start this process, perhaps going to circles and workshops, you may find that your dream state starts getting more colourful. Um because you're starting to open up your energies in your alpha brainwave state, in sleep state, you start, may start getting more visitation. You may also start getting messages from the spirit guides that are pushing you to open your energy up awake. Um, so the best thing to do is have a soul journal. I know I always say it because, you know, a lot of these dreams, if you, you will remember them as a psychic person, you'll remember every detail. Start writing them out in your soul journals because some of them will hold valuable messages for you and other people. So make sure you do that. Write down your dreams. Even if they don't make sense at, the, at that time, then, you know, you could, they may make sense for the future. An excellent um, website I use is dreammoods.com. So when I've dreamt some dreams, I think, what the hell was that? Because um, 
And you're like, that was just so random. Dream analysis will help you understand it. There's also many dream books that give you the spiritual um, donation of what you're doing as well. So, you you know, you think, wow, that's amazing. It's exactly what's going on. So make sure you do that, okay? Um, also, the one thing to do is, is you will start becoming more open. As I said before, you'll start coming a lot more sensitive to people and situations. So this is the number one vision that you have to do um, on yourself every morning, every night. Right? And it's really, really simple. When you wake up, before you get out of bed, just imagine that there's a big, massive pink bubble, almost like blowing a balloon up. And it's coming up past your feet, coming up past your body, around your head and ceiling, okay? The reason you're doing that is because you are sending an intent to your spirit guides and to, you know, the spirit world to say, right, I just want a little bit of protection from other people's energies and energies of the universe that might drain me. Because you'll find that you, you, you become more sensitive, you get easier, um, people get easier access to your energy. So imagine that blob. When you're standing in front of people, if it's at work and they're moaning at you or shouting at you or whatever, in they go, on cue. I start bloody barking, didn't she? Just imagine, I've, you know, I've had people stand in front of me like, no, 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 and I think, oh my God, you're just so negative. And so I also imagine a brick wall, a pink brick wall between me and them, right? And I want to laugh because I'm like, my God, I've got this wall in front of you. It just stops you from, you know, absorbing some of the energy because if you remember you're learning to absorb energy from objects from people from cards if you want to do tarot angel card readings um, you're learning to blend with other objects other energy and so to keep that in check imagine that wall in front of people if difficult customers or you know a mate that's like totally negative put that wall in front of you every time you will want to laugh it's quite funny because you're blocking them out also, when you go to bed, do exactly the same thing. Imagine yourself in that bubble. I don't recommend doing meditation or any psychic exercises just about before you're about to go to sleep. Because if you don't close yourself down properly, you're going to end up wide open and you'll be knackered when you wake up in the morning. Um, so have that pink bubble around you all the time. It's a really good way of self-love because pink obviously represents Archangel Chamuel. Rose Quartz Pink is obviously, you know, the love colour. Um, it, it keeps you encased in this lovely bubbly light of self-love, but it also keeps you from being drained. Okay, so make sure you do that. Another perfect way to maintain your energy whilst you're taking these new steps is to sage. White sage. It's basically a dried plant. A lot of... I, I get it actually... Um, blessed from native american tribe by the shaman and basically it stinks when you burn it and so i sage myself quite regularly it takes away all the negative energy that's in the auric field and it also cleanses us ready for us to go forward and learn more basically it's there's no magic about it you light it it stinks um i think i've mentioned this before in another um video um you know Traditionally, you're supposed to have like a shell underneath to catch the ashes. I just use anything. And then you just basically ask the energy to take any negative um, energy from you or any heavy, dense energy that you've picked up along the way from the, you know, from the world, from humans. And you basically just take the sage around your head, around your body and seal it around your feet and it's done. It's as simple as that. If you want to do your house as well, by means do that. Make sure windows open um in each room so that basically it, you know the energy is supposed to attach itself to the smoke and then it takes it out to the universe to dissipate um so you can do it in your house as well to keep a nice clean place you may also find that you'll be attracted to crystals once you start your path um your number one crystal um to start off with um is an amethyst which is i've showed you before um it's excellent for focusing your psychic ability it's excellent for connecting with the spirit realms. Um, it's a really good way to focus your energy on ethereal planes and esoteric um, knowledge. It's a real good one. If you really are interested, perhaps get, I recommend Judy Hall's um, Crystal Bible. I would show you all this, but I've packed it all because I'm moving. Um, but if you're really interested in crystals, have a look at Crystal Bible. Start learning what ones are good for you. Um, you know, how your body is, your personality. Find out what ones are good for you, for your chakra systems. So we'll be doing more on crystals in another video. But crystals really do help to enhance your vibration um, and get you going in that respect. So definitely do that. Um, 
obviously the number one thing as well to do is meditation most of my development my knowledge that I've gained is not from books I don't ever read up on anything unless I'm asked to do it after I've been told about it meditation is the way that you will develop a hundred pace you will literally gallop along if you meditate a lot because you're opening your energy um, to them which is part of what you do when you're doing a reading or if you're doing healing or whatever you're doing and your spirit guide will come along he will not or she will not possibly introduce herself like they have with me for a long time it depends when when you're ready to know who they are and what they are just know they're there even if you don't see them by meditation you'll get lessons you'll get guidance you'll get inspiration you'll be get, getting advice on how to lead your life what to do it is just amazing you know we all sit here wondering about all these answers and to our questions we've got about life about development about who we are by meditation you'll get it answered in one session mostly don't get frustrated if all you're seeing is darkness or just light or you're seeing fluffy rainbows it's all part of the development all right you won't get some of you won't get full-on you know chats about what to do and where to go forward straight away you know it, the whole essence of meditation is to have a still mind so that you're open to inspiration and open to anything they want to bring you the whole point of being a medium or, or having psychic knowledge and working with it is to be an empty empty conduit so that you can then be filled with visions thoughts feelings senses so the more open your vessel is and the more empty it is the more they can fill you with all of this information and so part of meditation is to still your mind to nothingness so that it can be um, filled with all this beautiful knowledge from above um, so if you've got nothing that is perfect I have times I've had my students go I didn't get anything what nothing at all nothing like thinking about your daughter or thinking about your husband or thinking about you've got to pick your washing up no perfect why is that perfect they always think they're going to see angels and god knows what and they're dead man and it's like no that's the whole point you're working towards a still mind and still energy so they can start working with you it's brilliant and they go oh right, okay so that's what you need to work for peace calm within so that you're ready to receive whatever they want to bring you and believe me they will back it up they will say things to you in your meditation and then they will actually back it up and present it to you it is just simply amazing what they can do so be aware that you are entering into a whole new world of understanding and beauty and bearing in mind now i've had six years of complete connection with it well saying that i had two years of hating and being completely disconnected but you know i've i've been the 24/7 student of this and i do have bad days we're all human when we have bad days but you know what to be in their energy is sublime because you know you're always going to be looked after i'm going to give you one word of warning though when you have a drink all your inhibitions go and you become an open vessel for spirit people right so I used to shamefully in my teens as a cadet I remember doing readings a police cadet doing readings in the headquarters cafe at night like totally drunk um you will be the best medium and psychic in the world if when you've had a drink don't do it I remember being in Chicago's in South End and I saw this bloke and he was starting to try and have a fight with this bloke and I could see his dad was there who'd just passed and it was a funeral day and his dad's come please help him please help him so I went up and said the dad's name and this bloke just went what and I said I think it, I don't know I was just saying your dad Tom's saying don't do this don't wreck his day how do you know that how do you know I said I'm medium so then he started crying and cuddling me right because I said things that really hit home and then his wife came out saw me cuddle him she wanted to beat me up it was a nightmare so I'm like no 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 I'm psychic the times I've got myself in strife oh my god don't do it you are wide open and plus it's not respectful of the spirit person even though they will jump in any minute they can it's not respectful to the recipient it is a total disrespectful way of doing it <clears throat> but trust me you will and most people do uh, just don't do it drunk oh my god it just leads to so many problems and you've got a responsibility with this you know if you really want to start grabbing hold of this and start testing your psychic ability um i used to get and uh, my friends around i used to read their palms actually which was weird but i think it was really just touching them you know or have a go at getting some tarot cards and seeing if you can interpret the tarot cards 
um, see what feels right for you, you know, try everything and see what feels right for you. I also used to get my friends to send photos of their loved ones and to not tell me if they're alive or past. Um, and I used to read the photographs, psychometry it's called, and I used to read um, the objects that they would give me um, and test myself to see how much I picked up. You'll surprise yourself, I'm telling you. Um, so I used to love doing that. There's psychic exercises on the internet. Or even, I know this sounds really, really like spooky and a bit morbid, but I used to find a murder victim but not read anything about them and concentrate on the photo and write down what I picked up on the photo and then read what actually happened to them and see if I was right on that. Um, oh, my goodness. And the other thing as well is, is to um, look at other people, learn to see people's auras. That's really good, that is. It's a bit invading privacy, but I don't know. Um, so the best time to do this is um, like in a waiting room or on the tube or something. So how to read an auric field um, is basically if you look about um, two, three inches above someone's head, try it, right? <clears throat> do you remember those dotted pictures that were huge in the 90s where they're like 3D dots? And if you stare at them, you then see a picture come out or the 80s, whenever it was. Basically, that's what you want to do. You're, you you can't use your eyes. I know it sounds really weird. Stare past a person's head. Don't look at them. Focus on just staring, daydreaming above them. And you'll see a glow come up around their head. Don't look at the glow. Because if you look at it, the analytical part, the left-hand side of your brain, you go, what are you looking at? You're not looking at anything. Carry on staring above it. And you'll see the glow. And eventually, the more you do it, you'll start seeing colour in it. And the colour is something that lots of people work with because we're made up of colour, energy and light. And so, you know, you could have black in there that means, oh, they're not great. Or you could have pink where there's a lot of love needed or they're actually full of love. You will learn to understand what colour means to you. I remember being at um, Hogwarts, I call it, at Arthur Finley College. And this bloke was doing um, a workshop on colour, saying, oh, this colour means that, this colour means that. And I think that's too regimented. I don't agree with that. Um, there are certain colours that, you know, obviously um, resonate with our chakra, that's without saying. However, colour to you might mean different things, okay? So just go with what you feel that colour means. And if you say to someone, oh, I can see red around you, um, you know, you're having stress at the moment, and they can say, yeah, then you know that means stress to you. To other people, it could mean passion, it could mean love, it could mean, you know, all sorts of things. So work with colour as well. Works on anything. You see the aura of your dog. Just have a go. It's really interesting. It's really good. You can even see your own energy. You can even see your own um, auric field. It's like now I can see the glow around my fingers, right? And basically, I can see it's like a white mist. Hang on a minute. I'm staring past it. And then what you can do is, it's like bubble gum. You can actually see you moving your energy. You can see it now. And then if you close your eyes, you'll actually feel a tiny little push against the energy between your fingers. Try things like that to understand your energy, to understand your awareness, because that really does help. Um, it's all about finding what, you, what, what suits you best. Luckily for me, I'm very, very lucky. I come from such amazing mediums and, you know, all my family, brother, sister, we can all, we can all do it. I'm very lucky that I, I can actually do anything. Crystal balls, tarot, angel cards. I can connect with the angel realms, um, the spirit world. I've got the art of prophecy. I can see forward. I can see past. I can see present. I can see people's ailments. My brother is an absolute, oh my God, he's a god of um, health and intuition. He really is. Um, I've got angel realms now digging in my ears, ringing in my ears. I can hear angel realms. Thank you. Massively. Wow. Um, as I say, you'll find your forte. You may be brilliant at everything. You know, as I can taste, smell, see, I can use all my energy. So I'm very, very lucky that I've got all of the abilities to do that. But um, it's quite rare. But you may have all of those abilities or you may feel like you want to be a tarot reader. You may feel like you want to work with um, runes. You know, You just don't know. So go there and have a look. Also, you know, there's loads of mind, body, spirit festivals um, that you can go to and you can, you know, discover things, buy things. You will end up buying everything. Oh, my God, it's a nightmare. You just want to buy crystals and angels and fairies and <coughs> angel cards and God knows what. So, um, yeah, you, you end up spending a lot of money on this, I think. 
Um, also, you know, retreats are really, really good way. And obviously, I've got my um, first retreat I haven't done for a long time, but I'm so excited to do a retreat with Sacred Stars at Gaunt's House at Dorset. We've got a weekend away in a beautiful, stately home. And, the, you know, it's really weird because all of the residential retreats I've done, everybody's like cries when they go because they're so special. You're in a bubble of love and spiritual energy, and, it's, and you're with like minded people, you belong. It's the first time you feel like you belong, and it's so, so very special. Um, and that one's in April, so by all means, if you want to come along to that, um, please come along to that one. Um, there's loads of brilliant tutors. Um, you can pick what subjects you want to do, um, and it's just a beautiful way of, of developing. By being on a residential retreat, I would say you're most probably doing about 50 workshops in one because everything's more heightened, everybody's aware you've got excellent tutors and you're in a permanent bubble of spiritual awareness and knowledge um, and it's just a wonderful thing to, to, to attend. I wished I could go on one myself but I'm teaching at one which is a lot more exciting. I do love my teaching, I miss it desperately, that's why I do these videos. I adore sharing my knowledge with you all and I adore seeing people grow and people experiencing all of the first time, you know, synchronicities and coincidences and the first time doing meditation and meeting a spirit guide it's just wonderful to see it gives me such joy i love it um so we'll leave it at that for the time being have a little go start some little psychic exercises start going to some workshops let me know how you get on and start talking to them meditate and even you know just speak to them normally during the day make sure you get yourself out in nature because nature is the best way to charge your soul to charge your battery getting away from humans to so take the dog out or find yourself in a place where you can see nothing and feel nothing but nature around you because that's important okay you need to um, have time to get away from humans and get away from um, that dense energy you know you need to get as light as you can um, have a look at your diet as well don't do anything don't eat a full roast dinner before you go into a workshop don't have a really heavy dinner before you do meditation it's best to do it light um, have a light meal um, to give you energy but not so it bogs you down um, and the most important thing is is that when you're doing all of these sort of things is to close yourself down so what I'm going to do is I'll do that on the next video okay we'll talk about how to open your energies and how to close them down um, so that you can discipline yourself try and aim if you're doing your own psychic exercises try and aim for a certain time of day or a regular time um, so that your spirit guides are aware of when you're ready to work and when you're not okay um, when you are finishing doing whatever you're doing I'm going to actually put this in there because it's important Imagine either being put back in the pink bubble or imagine a vision in your mind of, of closing down. So some people imagine turning a switch off. Some people, I do, I say, I'm now closing down and I imagine flaps going down on all of my chakra and say, thank you for allowing me to work. The only thing I want to be connected with now is either for intuition to help me on my earth path or for healing. Okay. Um, imagine I used to put myself in a black velvet sack and zip it up. So create a vision in your mind to say you've now stopped your psychic exercises or your psychic lesson. Okay, find a way in your mind to say I'm now stopping. I know it sounds disrespectful, but it's like training a puppy when you first connect with your guides. Guides and spirit people want to be of you all the time, right? They are relentless. And so you need to make sure you close down so that they're not draining your energy and talking to you because you'll find going into Tesco's, going into Sainsbury's, you'll start hearing people's voices and you'll start sensing things with people and you think, oh my God, I know that they're like feeling down or God, I know she misses a daughter. You'll start doing that. You'll become really aware of people's energies. But you've got your bubble of um, pink already, so that's good, all right? Stay away from starting to like do messages for strangers like I've always done. It's a nightmare. Um, and imagine a closed down visualisation when you're doing any work. A um, really good um, team leader or a, or a circle leader will teach you this anyway, okay? So you'll learn that in circles or workshops anyway. They will teach you how to close down. How to open up is the opposite. Open up. Lots of people do a blooming flower. I open up by just opening all my chakras and sending a light out. Again, it's best to find your own vision. Um, 
to show your intent, open or close. Your mind is the most powerful part of your intent. Okay, so know that whatever you create, you think pink bubble, that's nothing. You're actually creating a universal intent that you don't want people to interfere with your energy when you're out and about. Even though it's just a visualisation, it's powerful, it works, okay? So um, have a little go with all of those. Let me know how you get on. I'm really excited to hear. Um, and embrace it and run with it. Because I tell you what, it's the best thing you'll ever do. Even if you don't want to do readings, even if you don't want to do anything about it, even just getting on a spiritual path, you'll find your life so much easier. It's ridiculous. So have a little go anyway. Have a little dabble with it. And he's like, I just got trolled the other day saying, oh, you're, you're dabbling with the devil. You're doing this, you're doing that. I'm like, oh, my God, behave. Like attracts like. We work in the light. We attract light. I've never been exposed to anything horrendous unless it's on a, um, you know, on an investigation. It's an absolute load of old rubbish. The people that actually do attract negative energies are the ones that pray against it every single day and concentrate on it the whole time. And I actually said to her, if you believe in the devil, you believe in God, you believe in angels, so get over yourself. Obviously, you believe in things that aren't human. And she was like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, oh, do you know, I'm not going to waste my bleeding time. So uh, you're not entering into anything negative. You're not opening yourself up to bloody ridiculousness that people say, oh, you don't know what you're dabbling with. You don't know what you're doing. You're opening your energy up to the universal energy of love and light. You know, what can happen apart from beauty and great things? So... um have fun, enjoy yourselves, and I hope this has helped you. Get those little things like the sage, get your little crystal, get your Dream Moods book or go on to the dreammoods.com and just start having a little play with it all. It's really, really good. At this point in time, I don't recommend communication boards or angel boards or anything like that. Just do very basic, skilled um, psychic exercises. Um, but if you really want to gallop ahead, start meditating as much as you can because that will take you very, very far in your development. So until the next time, have fun, enjoy your newfound abilities and um, let me know how you get on. If you think that this will help other people, please, please share it um, because the more people I'm exposed to and can help, the better. So thank you so much for listening and I'll speak to you again soon. Take care.